Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, June 18th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Washington, D.C. Netflix reported a number of different vulnerabilities in Linux and FreeBSD kernels that can be used to trigger a kernel panic. These vulnerabilities are related to the TCP selective acknowledgement feature. TCP selective acknowledgement is a TCP option that can be used in order to acknowledge out of order TCP segments. Without selective acknowledgement, TCP can only acknowledge the last complete set of segments received, indicating the next segment, the next byte really it's expecting to receive. With selective acknowledgement, any future discontinuous segments that are received can also be acknowledged, which of course improves performance somewhat. Well, the problem here is that any recent Linux kernel doesn't actually do this quite correctly if extremely small segments are received. And as a result, this can trigger a kernel panic, leading essentially to a relatively simple to exploit remote denial of service attack. Some compared it to a ping of death, which isn't quite wrong. Well, it's TCP, not ICMP, but other than that, the impact is somewhat similar. So how do you offend against this? Well, uh, apply the patch, or if you don't want to patch right now, you can also just disable selective acknowledgements in your Linux kernel. That's not terribly hard to do, just a simple setting in the proc file system, and probably not not going to affect performance by a lot. From a network defense point of view, it looks like the attack, at least the denial of service attack, does require packets with a maximum segment size of 48 bytes. This is an extremely small value, and according to the RFC, that value actually should not be less than 536 bytes. So if you have the ability to filter on TCP options, then filtering anything with the maximum segment size of less than 536 should be reasonably safe. Aside from the denial of service vulnerability, there are a couple of uh, other vulnerabilities related to TCP selective acknowledgements that were released or found by Netflix. Those really just uh, have some performance impact and don't cause a kernel panic. The free BSD vulnerabilities also do just cause a slowdown and not a full denial of service. And apparently Logitech is now willing to exchange some of the receivers for its R400, 700 and 800 presenters. For about the last three years, there have been multiple articles about vulnerabilities in these receivers that essentially evolve around the fact that these receivers act as generic keyboards. So an attacker who is able to break the relative simple authentication and encryption for these presenters is able to send random keystrokes to a system using this particular receiver. The fix apparently is that now only the particular keys that the presenter is using are being allowed, which essentially your cursor keys and things like page up, page down in order to advance slides. And any other key presses are no longer processed by the updated receiver. So apparently there is no software firmware update for it. You have to exchange the actual physical dongle that's being used in order to receive the signal from the presenter. I didn't find any official recall notice, anything like this on the Logitech website. Website, just a note at a German website that states if you contact Logitech, they will essentially take care of the exchange. And of course, any of the newer Bluetooth-based devices are not affected. 
And if you wonder what the rig exploit kit has been up to lately, Brad ran into a recent sample of this particular malware and uh, took a look at it and as usual published his analysis with lots of traffic captures showing how the malware actually was delivered and well uh, what it did once it actually infected a system. In this particular case actually multiple pieces of malware were installed. The one that Pratt was able to identify easily is Azeralt which actually is an information stealer and a downloader that's often used to yet install more malware on the system. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.